Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you and in specific those people that have come to me in the recent past or to encourage me to continue to do these blogs or discussions that I've been posting. Thank you for the encouragement. This is in part for all of you to educate yourself so that you can take charge of your health conditions. Today my post is about what's chronic hepatitis C and how do we prevent it. Chronic hepatitis C is a viral condition. Hepatitis as a word means inflammation of the liver. The liver sits under the right rib cage and anything that inflames it is referred to in medical terminology as hepatitis. In specific then, hepatitis C is a virus that causes that inflammation. There are many other viruses that cause that inflammation including hepatitis A and B, but today we're going to talk about chronic hepatitis C. Many times when you get a viral disease, the virus lasts for a short time and then leaves the body. For example, even the COVID virus uh, or coronavirus is acute. You get it and it leaves. Uh, similar to that is the common cold, etc. But in chronic hepatitis C, uh, what happens is that in a percentage of people, the virus then stays on and becomes a lifelong infection. In becoming a lifelong infection, it causes liver damage and it's the most common cause of liver transplantation in our country right now. In 2016, the Center for Disease Control estimates that there's about 2.4 million people who have chronic hepatitis C. Every year, there is approximately few thousand cases that are reported, but the CDC estimates that the actual number of people who are getting hepatitis C is around 50,000. So how do we get chronic hepatitis C? Chronic hepatitis C is transmitted by sharing needles, razors, or syringes. Uh, there's a small amount of transmission uh, through birth uh, uh, when a child is born, which is around the range of 6%. It's not very big. Uh, unprotected sexual uh, intercourse uh, can be a risk factor, but is uncommon. Unregulated tattoos. Very rarely sharing of personal items such as toothbrushes, razors, uh, glucose monitors. And prior to 1992, when testing started, if one has received a blood transfusion, uh, that can be uh, a, a way that people have got hep chronic hepatitis C. And it's not uh, uh, spread by eating, uh, breastfeeding, hugging, kissing, coughing, or sneezing. So it's not none of this contact uh, that transmits it. So therefore, who's at risk? Uh, people who do IV drugs, uh, patients with HIV infection, patients who've had history of hemodialysis, especially before the testing started, and especially people who've received blood transfusions before 1992, or organ transplantation before that period. So the symptoms we can de de divide as this acute infection, in other words, when the virus hits us, and then it's the chronic aspect of it when it lingers in the body. The chronic aspect is silent, which is why it's hard to get. Whereas if you have acute hepatitis, that you know people generally have darker colored urine, they can get yellow jaundice, fever, uh, just not feeling well, just like any other viral syndrome, but especially the yellow jaundice can be a specific uh, indication that the liver is uh, affected. This slide shows how the course of chronic hepatitis is. The liver normally sits up here. It's an organ that looks triangular. And over a period of time, as chronic hepatitis C, in other words, the virus lives in the body, it affects the liver, it can cause scarring. And in, a, in about 20 years after having it, the liver can become scarred or as the photograph shows, uh, has, a, has a knobbly uh, appearance. Uh, and then in an even smaller percentage of patients, then the liver then completely fails, can develop cancer of the liver, and sometimes death because of that. We are trying therefore to find the disease, we are trying to prevent it, we are trying to treat it so that this course of what you are seeing is can be prevented. 
who should we test? And the essential answer right now seems to be everybody should have a test at least once. The, especially people at risk, you know, uh, who are 18 or older, uh, history of ongoing drugs, uh, history of concomitant liver disease like hepatitis B, etc., uh, uh, co-infections of HIV, people who have hemodialysis, anybody that has abnormal liver tests, uh, anybody that's received blood or organ transplantation before 1992. Uh, the CDC had re recommended what's called the birth cohort testing. In other words, they tested initially baby boomers, but essentially right now the consensus seemed to be everybody should probably get one test during their lifetime. And, and definitely if you have those uh, uh, risk factors. The good news is that treatment has really evolved uh, from when we started treating it in the 1990s to now. Uh, the chance of getting rid of the infection has grown from 20-30% to greater than 90%. That's the big headline. This, the treatments have very minimal side effects and I have a graph to follow this, uh, this uh, uh, treatment slide which shows the other uh, treatments that are available for uh, chronic hepatitis C but essentially these are pills and uh, uh, they can be taken for a short period of time. I'm not uh, digging too much into it right now because of the, uh, the there are several nuances. Treatments, therefore, is uh, oral medications. Uh, of note is that in Blackhawk and surrounding counties, we are the uh, only providers that have been treating chronic hepatitis C. Now, for more than two decades, we've had a great deal of experience. Barb Burkle, nurse practitioner in our office, has particularly taken this upon herself and has developed a great deal of expertise uh, in conjunction with the rest of the providers here. Uh, the other things that one can do if one has uh, chronic hepatitis C is to uh, prevent other viruses such as hepatitis A or B. Uh, so therefore vaccination is important for those uh, diseases. Uh, avoiding alcohol because alcohol can go hand in hand with chronic hepatitis C to damage the liver even further. If one has a liver disease, we should always check about how drugs, other medications that we are taking will interact uh, with the liver because the liver tends to metabolize and clean out all drugs. So therefore, a question is indicated to ask uh, for, uh, you know, is there a drug interaction? Is there anything I need to do if one has liver disease has to be asked? And I think concomitant testing for HIV is recommended as well. So therefore, in summary, chronic hepatitis C is a liver disease caused by a virus. It is eminently treatable. Essentially, I think everybody should be trusted, but specifically those that I've listed. It is, uh, I think, uh, a disease that has uh, uh, public health importance. And I think if you have further questions about it, please call us or ask us. We've taken this as a special project and passion for us, and we, we are available to you to uh, educate and treat if necessary. Thank you.